So today's presentation is going to be on cell communication. Cells can communicate with each other in lots of different ways. Sometimes they will release hormones that actually send a message to themselves. Sometimes they will release hormones that will send a message to an adjacent cell. Sometimes a nearby cell or sometimes a cell that's far away. We have a different name for each one of these. It's called autocrine when you send a message to yourself. So basically you're gonna be releasing a hormone that leaves the cell, but then binds to a receptor on the surface of the cell and sends a message to itself. It seems kind of silly, but this does happen. Um, sometimes they communicate with themselves and other nearby cells at the same time with the same uh, signal. Juxtacrine means I am an adjacent cell. Uh, in a juxtacrine situation, we can either be um, sending messages directly through uh, channels that can form between cells, or we can be in direct contact with another cell, maybe a um, receptor on the surface is uh, matching up to a molecule on the surface of another cell. Paracrine means nearby, um, so they're either nearby cells or maybe you're moving across the uh, synapse of a nerve cell or a synapse between a nerve and a muscle cell. That would be paracrine. And endocrine means within the body. In endo means within. And so endocrine means somewhere else within the body. I'm going to communicate with another cell somewhere else within the body. So let's look at some examples of each one of these more specifically. So there's a couple different types of junctions uh, where communication can take place between cells. One of them we find in animal cells are called gap junctions. And these are little tunnels that go from one cell to another. And they allow cells to send hormones uh, from the cytoplasm of one cell to the cytoplasm of another. And those hormones can communicate messages between the cells. In plants, you have the same setup, but now we have things called plasmodesmata. Plasmodesmata are a little bit different because they actually have the ER or the highway system within a cell goes directly from one cell to the other. So the ER is continuous. So think of an ER being continuous from this cell over into this cell. So the tube in between is part of the highway system. This allows molecules to travel relatively quickly from cell to cell to cell to cell. So this is kind of like a tree's uh, bloodstream. So it doesn't move as fast as our bloodstream does, but it's a way of sending messages fairly quickly. Trees, by no means do they respond quickly to anything but they can respond in a decent amount of time to predation and other uh, environmental factors. This is an example of direct contact. Um, here we have an antigen presenting cell. So basically this might be a macrophage or some other type of cell that gobbled up a virus or a bacteria and it's presenting part of that virus or bacteria on the surface. So these would be the surface proteins of the bacteria or the virus. They're being presented on the surface and a receptor on another cell called the helper T cell is identifying that particular uh, surface protein and matching up perfectly to it. This then will go and identify find B cells and T cells that also match perfectly to this uh, to this particular protein. And that's how we have our immune response. Okay, so this is our learned immune response. It's not the immediate response we see, but this is what happens. Um, usually takes about hmm, five to seven days to get going really good, but um, this is how we can defend ourselves against uh, viruses.
in bacteria. And also the nice thing about this is we have leftover memory T and memory B cells that will basically make us immune to a secondary response. So here's another example. This is, uh, these two are examples of paracrine. Para means nearby. So for example, um, let's say I scrape my knee. If I scrape my knee, we're gonna have to do a lot of cell production. So how am I gonna get that cell production rolling? Well, if I have a cell that can make lots of growth hormone and release that growth hormone into the environment, it can target other cells and it can start mitosis in lots of nearby cells. And so the cells can start dividing at a faster rate until we have the knee repaired and then they can stop the signaling. Um, this is an example of paracrine signaling. Sometimes it's called synaptic signaling, but basically um, neurotransmitters are released from one cell and they go and they bind to the receptor and start a, a new nerve impulse on the next cell, or maybe they start a contraction in a muscle. Here's an example, a bigger picture of uh, what we were just talking about. So we have calcium that flows in, that binds to these uh, vesicles, that signals to the vesicles to go uh, bind with the cell membrane and dump your contents into the synaptic space. When they do that, the neurotransmitters move across, bind to receptors. These are gated channels on the other side. Uh, these gated channels receive these messages and open. And when those gated channels open, a lot of times they'll let sodium rush in. Sodium rushing in causes a chain reaction where another nerve impulse gets carried down the next cell. And here's an example of endocrine. So in endocrine, you have um, cells that are in glands that release their, uh, neuro, their hormones into the bloodstream. When they release these hormones into the bloodstream, they can flow through the bloodstream and bind to other uh, cells and cause a response uh, from those cells. So this is not as fast as our nervous system, but it's pretty darn fast. <laughs>